Hi everyone, welcome to our latest episode of Caterpillars Digging Into History. I'm your host, Rusty Dunn. As always, an honor to sit alongside our Corporate Heritage Archives Manager, Lee Fosberg. It's been a while, how are you doing, Lee? Great to see you. Good to see you, Rusty. Uh, both of us have been looking forward to bringing you what we think is a really special episode for our viewers. And we're actually doing this from the Caterpillar Visitors Center located in Peoria, Illinois. Uh, it's the jumping off point for some stories we're gonna bring you today around World War II. There's a new exhibit here called Homefront, doing the work in World War II. Lee, set the stage for what this exhibit is about. Sure, well, you know, quite simply, it is a dedication to our employees, you know, who worked and supported the people on the fronts, right, by creating products that were, you know, vital to, to the war effort. Incredible to think it's been 78 years since the end of World War II, but it was an event that was one of the defining moments, yes, for a young caterpillar, 15 years old at, at the time. Absolutely. And there's so many stories of caterpillar men and women and our products, our machines that contributed to helping the Allies fight fight the war. And, and Lee, when the U.S. entered the war, uh, what kind of thing, what kind of products were we contributing? Sure, and you know, we have to walk back even a little bit before the war because we supported, you know, what became our allies through a program called Lend-Lease, right? Um, but really our equipment was, one was the track type tractor. It was later referred to as the boss of the beach. It was used by the Seabees, right, when they would land on these beaches in the Pacific Theater. But also things were used like gen sets, motor graders, what would become later the wheel tractor scraper. All of these items were vastly important to getting the job done. These machines, in essence, became frontline fighters, uh, which mm -hmm. we'll talk a little bit more about. There are a number of important artifacts in this exhibit that we want to show people and talk about some of the stories behind them. Uh, and let's put a little more context around it at the time in terms of how many factories we had to produce some of the things we were talking about, how many employees we had, what kind of company were we at that sure. point? Sure, well, you know, we think of Caterpillar today, right, as having, you know, factories across the globe. Well, at this time, Rusty, we only had two factories, both in the U.S., one in California, in the San Francisco Bay Area, and the other one right here in Peoria. But they were making products at that time that were exported across the globe. I want to talk about one of my favorite exhibits, and this is a person we both had the honor of meeting um, in his life, Bob Gilmore, a future Caterpillar president and COO, and, it, and, and there's an exhibit called Homefront Hero. Talk about Bob and, and the story behind him. Well, you know, Bob was, right, one of the nicest guys you would ever meet, but he was also a patriot, and kind of what his story was, he was very young, he was around 18 years of age. He worked at in the factory. He had a vital job for the war effort. So the company wanted him to stay. They didn't want him to go off into the war. Well, he he kind of disagreed with he that. He insisted. He insisted, so he signed up, you know, unbeknownst to the company. And he was a navigator in B-17 bombers from England, you know, into Europe. Uh, so he had like a very vital and actually a very you know, a, a scary job, One of right? the riskiest, yeah. most, least yeah. lethal jobs you could yeah. have early early in the war. Yeah. What are some of the things in the exhibit, some of the things that he donated? Well, one of the coolest things, I think, is, well, we have his uniform, right? Yeah. But we also have a camera that he used to bring on missions, and he told me this, that you weren't supposed to do that, but, you know, he was so, like, he was always curious. He would take these pictures in the plane and stuff like that, you know, which he wasn't supposed to do, but we have his camera. We also have, which is kind of neat, is his employee badge. And you'll see throughout the exhibit, there's a lot of employee badges because at this time, you know, we take it for granted today, right? You and I have our own badges, right. but it really started during the World War II era. So he, we have this badge that he would have worn before he went off and when he came back to Cap. It just strikes me that in his role as president and running the company when he ran it, I'm sure there were tough days, challenging days, but probably nothing compared to what his experience was in, in the war. Oh, yeah. And an incredible, incredible person, Bob Gilmore. There's also another uh, story to tell, sort of call it engineers in action and made up of 
all Caterpillar employees, Caterpillar engineers, who were their own company within the U.S. Army, yes? Yes, they were called the 497th, and they were engineers. They mustered in Peoria, Illinois, and one of the neat things is we have a film that was shot. When they got together, they met outside of what was the Peoria courthouse. They signed up and they marched their way down to the trains and went off to basic training, but where they served was in the Pacific Theater. And what they did was they kept the machinery going, right? Like Somebody this had kind of to, equipment. Right. Yeah. And they built what was called the Lido Road, um, which was in Asia, which was a very uh, vital part of the war effort in that region. Was their camp called, correct me if I'm wrong, obviously, but have they have a little Peoria established yes, yeah. as part of their camp? Yeah, and we, have, called. and we have a great photo that's in the exhibit, and it, it has like these signs like, you know, to London's this way and New York's that way, but then it's like Peoria, go that way. So yeah, a little piece of Peoria and a little piece of Canada. Interesting. There's a, another, I would say, cultural icon who hasn't heard of Rosie the Riveter. Mm -hmm. And really, the women who, as the men went off to war, kept things going here at home in the factory. Yeah, you know, I think this is one of my most favorite stories at all, right? It's really now become part of popular culture. So you gotta remember, before the war starts, we had 11,000 employees. At the peak, we had over 20,000 employees. And of these employees, over 3,000 of them were women. And within our foundry, which was an aluminum foundry for engines at that time, over 85% of those employees were women. So a huge impact within the company. But you know, it was also kind of a myth that women after the war ended left. Really didn't happen. It was true, certain percentages. But you also had a lot of women come in at that time in professional positions, working in things like metallurgy. And we have a lot of objects that they would have used within the factory at that time. Right, so. and again, it goes on to be a global cultural icon. So Absolutely, and you know, the other thing to mention too, Rusty, is it really was too of a time of, you know, the entry of diversity within the company. You had people coming to work from the South that were moving up to the North to fill these positions, and they stayed and they went on to be, you know, Caterpillar employees. And it, I, I, perhaps the most important piece, probably the most important artifact in this exhibit, an object that exists, and in fact, it, hopefully the shot can pick it up a little bit. It's right behind us here. It's the service flag. Mm -hmm. Talk about what that means and what it, what it represents. Sure, the, maybe the most moving artifact, That's right, that we have. Yeah. Um, and this was common in companies. And what it was in this banner or flag um, came from an area called the Export Department, so they were formerly responsible for, you know, when people were buying machineries across the globe, they would, you know, sell them and have them shipped. There were stars on the flag that represented the people from those departments who went off to, you know, fight in action that were employees. But there are also stars that are gold stars for people that, you know, never made it back. Um, so they honored those people because, right, they were their friends. They were people that they worked with, you know, Absolutely. very different time. Yeah, very, very touching. What a, what a fascinating artifact to look at and think about. In terms of back to the machines we produced for the war, of course, transmissions for tanks, for instance, uh, gun carriages, engines, of course, to power camps and, and such, but it was the crawler tractors. And I don't know if you have a number of how many crawler tractors, dozers that Caterpillar mm -hmm. produced for the war effort, but tens of thousands. So, you know, at first, which is kind of an interesting story, at first we did dabble and made things like howitzers, um, like you said, radial engines for tanks, but the track type tractor became so important to the effort. Actually, the government came back to us and said, quit making those items, make as many track type tractors as possible. You know, and we couldn't make enough, and we were making them. We actually even opened a plant in Decatur, Illinois, that was making these, the, that was formerly making radial engines that switched over less than a year to then start making track type tractors. But to show you that how important it was, it was referred to as the boss of the beach. The boss of the beach. The boss beach. of the beach. And the other thing is they started to become called bulldozers then, because formerly, right, they were a track type tractor, but these machines, which were now pushing dirt, where the blades were added, right, which was the bulldozer blade. 
Interesting. But, but we supplied the most track type tractors to the war effort out of any of the other companies. Because there were other companies, right, that 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 provided these machines. And in something that I've I've always heard that a couple of the, the generals of the war, of course, General Dwight mm -hmm. D. Eisenhower, Admiral Halsey, mm -hmm. both as they listed the you know the top three or four most important things that helped um, yep. win the war. Weren't we mentioned on both those lists, or the, do the uh, dozer was in there? Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, um, Admiral Halsey mentioned things like, you know, the radar and the submarine, <laughs> but the track type tractor was on his list of, you know, like top five, if you think about how, is, how like, moving is that? Right? That is incredible. These are important stories to tell and a Caterpillar history that's important to share. But I assume you cannot underestimate the impact um, that this global event had on a young company, yeah. Caterpillar, to, to what it is today. Well, you know, there's one artifact I think that just tells everything that you just said is one of my other favorite things is there's a toolbox from an employee. And this employee, you know, started working during the war. And like a lot of the things, when the war ended, right, you had a reduction of labor. And he took his toolbox, because he no longer worked for Cat, and he ended up working somewhere else, and he put it in his attic. And it sat in the attic until he died in the, you know, like the, the early 2000s. His son donated to us, and when you open it in the drawers, it has the items that he had while he worked during the war. Anything from like a comb to like a matchbook cover. He had yeah. award, little award pins that the company had won for meeting production. And it was almost like, I mean, like an inspiring piece. It is, know? it's a time capsule as we show you pictures of it. It looks mm -hmm. like it was made yesterday. Yes. By virtue yeah. of sitting in that attic untouched for yeah. all those years. Yeah. Incredible. So. Lee, thank you so much for, for sharing these stories. And I know that we could devote a couple of hours to this, but you, thanks for hitting some of the highlights. So important, again, to tell these stories. Uh, on behalf of Caterpillar History, so we appreciate that. My pleasure, Russ. Absolutely, and on behalf of both Lee and I, thanks to all of you for watching. We love bringing these stories to you. More to come, more Digging Into History episodes. In the meantime, please be safe in everything you do. Thanks for watching, we'll see you soon.